Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Lieutenant General Greg Bilton. I'm the Chief of Joint Operations. I would like to update you on the recovery operations for the MRH-90 Taipan helicopter, which impacted waters near Lindemann Island on Friday the 28th of July. Ongoing search and recovery operations have recovered a range of aircraft debris and major sections of the fuselage. This has included searches above and below the water surface. I can now advise that yesterday afternoon, Wednesday the 2nd of August, HMAS Hewins remotely operated underwater vehicle located a further, further debris field, including parts of the cockpit of the helicopter. The debris field is consistent with a catastrophic high impact. Sadly, I can confirm unidentified human remains have also been observed in this location by the remote operated underwater vehicle. Due to the nature of the debris field, positive identification of the remains is unlikely to occur until we, we recover more of the wreckage. Army has spoken with the families of the missing soldiers and is providing them with support. We will continue to support the families and other families who have reached out over the coming days and weeks and as their needs change. In the next 24 hours, HMAS Adelaide will hand over to ADV Reliant, which enables us to incorporate more specific rescue equipment on that vessel. While we continue with the recovery as best we can, poor weather conditions have continued to impact our search efforts. The weather is respected to remain challenging until mid next week. We thank the many emergency service personnel, sol soldiers, sailors and avi aviators from our international defence partners, civilian agencies and members of the local community for their assistance. Defence is unable to provide further details of the recovery operation or ongoing investigation at this time. Thank you. I will now take questions. Yes, the conditions have been quite difficult, both underwater and above the surface. Uh, the Whit Sundays is renowned for its um, significant currents, so the team are working through those. And as you can see, we are making progress, but it is methodical. How deep down is that uh, object located under uh, Approximately 40 metres below the surface. Yeah, hence uh, ADV Reliant is, um, is uh, a vessel that incorporates more modern equipment that helps us uh, to do that sort of recovery operation, uh, but it will still be a difficult uh, operation at 40 metres of depth. Yeah, so it is important to collect as much of the debris as we can, so we can fully understand how this incident occurred. Have divers already been in the water and how many would be involved um, in support of Reliance for that leak? Yes, yeah, so there's a number of dive teams that have been in the area actually since Friday. So the exercise incorporated, incorporated some divers. I don't have an exact figure of divers there, but what I can tell you is I have enough divers in that location to make sure we can continue the mission and sustain it for the coming days and weeks. Without at all preempting the outcome of the investigation, it's obviously it's a long way off. Are you satisfied with the extent to which uh, evidence has been gathered so far, uh, given the circumstances? I am, but you're also best to ask the Queensland Police Service because everything is handed over to the Queensland Police Service as they will bring it together so the relevant agencies can undertake the investigation. My understanding at this stage is uh, the Queensland Police Service is happy with the custody of the debris that's been collected. With the remaining MRH-90 fleet grounded, what plans are in place to support the special operation given that was its use? Yes, yeah, so we're working options at the moment uh, on what alternates might be available. Uh, of course, we have to wait until the investigation outcomes are made before we can make a decision about the MRH-90. So we are just working solutions. 
Uh, we've checked with the civil authorities who we would normally support and they, will, they are comfortable at this stage with alternate plans we have in place. It's not as easy as fast tracking the Black Hawk, so given that's the case, um, what would that process look like to get that online? How many um, mice model Black Hawks are in Australia at the moment and how many pilots are certified to fly? Yeah, so as I said, we're still working through the plan on how we'll work that capability and the critical roles that those helicopters have played for delivering capability for contingencies. I don't have a specific answer for you yet. As part of what's being recovered, the data recording equipment, was that on board? Has that been able to Are you talking about the black box? At this stage, we have not found that. Was anything sent out from before the impact that could help any flight data that was relayed in real time? No, it was a normal flight. Uh, in a group of four aircraft flying at the time. And uh, at this stage, all communications were normal before the aircraft impacted the water. How likely is it that that won't be found? Is it likely that once you can get closer, get more machinery, etc., then maybe you can find it? Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult task, but we will do our absolute best to find it. And as you know, the black box is critical to helping us to understand what's actually taken place. Yeah, um, look, I'm devastated and I'm distant from the actual gentlemen that have, have been lost. But I can assure you that in the units, uh, it, is, it is having a, a significant impact on them. Uh, we're just making sure that we provide the sort of psych psychological support and the, I guess, uh, the support for their well-being that's necessary. Uh, six aviation regiments come together. I'm confident their commanders are working hard to work through the challenges that they confront in losing their mates. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you.